Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Chemistry and of course uh, in this episode we'll, we'll start our study into what organic what chemistry. Organic chemistry. Alright and of course uh, in the seen episode so we're going to be what learning more about organic chemistry, organic compounds. Okay and organic chemistry the study of what organic what compounds are going to be what talking about carbon a lot. Alright uh, so please uh, do not forget to like this video do not forget to subscribe to this channel all right and do not forget to share this video if you are not sharing what you are doing is not good okay please if you are not liking this video what you are doing is also wrong all right and of course make sure that what you comment drop your comments if you have any question drop them in the comment section all right so uh, this video tutorial is sponsored by the O3 school jam app let's see a question from the app this is 2011 question number 40 2011 question number 40 the ability of carbon to form long chains is referred to as the ability of carbon to form long chains is referred to as a alkylation b isolation c catenation d carbonation you know the right answer keep it right there in your heart okay in your mind okay we will back to this question and many other questions from this application so please go to play store download the o3 school jump app immediately and start practicing your way to success that's all the past questions you need for your exam. So no need to go and buy past questions. All right. And of course, there's a classroom feature that has lecture notes structured according to the jam syllabus. Many people will not tell you that you need the jam syllabus to succeed in your exam. You must read according to the jam syllabus. They say laid out what topic. They say well, laid out a, a, a plan for you to what to study for your jam. Okay, so please, the app asks for the classroom feature that has those lecture notes structured according to that jam syllabus. Then likewise, there's a question search feature. You can search for questions according to topics okay and the question that jam has set on that topic before will come out for you to answer what's more there's a utm mock challenge every saturday compete with your mates win uh, uh win amazing prizes every saturday get used to jam pass and likely exam questions and what's more is that what you get to see your, your result released every saturday so that will be your confidence towards the main exam you know go they fear waiting no good when they say jam don't release results okay so some of you want to join that jam and release results <laughs> Okay, it's all right. Your ear will jump to your to your nose. Okay, they will switch positions. Okay, your eye will switch position with your, with your lips. Okay, so please, you will not be scared for any reason because you have already built your confidence towards that exam. All right, so now, without further ado, okay, let's go to what, what we have for today, organic what, chemistry. Okay, and we have said that organic chemistry, of course, uh, is study of, of organic what, compounds. Okay, the study of organic compounds. All right, so uh, organic compounds are compounds of carbon. Organic compounds, compounds are compounds of what? Of carbon. All right, organic compounds are what? Are compounds of what? Of carbon. All right, and what's more important to know is that carbon, uh, carbon what is in uh, is the sixth element. In the periodic table, okay. Carbon is the sixth element, sixth element in the periodic what table, okay. Carbon, the sixth element in the periodic table, okay. So we have what C, we have what mass twelve, and what atomic number six, okay. Carbon has six protons. Carbon has six neutrons. Carbon has six electrons. All right, so this is what carbon, okay? Having what, uh, uh, six protons, as having what, six neutrons, and having what, six what, electrons, all right? So it has what, electronic configuration. The electronic configuration of carbon is what, 1s2, okay, 2s2, and what, 2p2. What, two. This is the electronic configuration of carbon in the ground state, in the ground what state. If you want to use what your electron box okay uh, diagram so please if you have not uh, watched our video on electronic configuration you are doing yourself all right so this channel has everything you need so please go and watch what electronic configuration all right so this is what the electronic configuration of what of uh, of carbon in the ground state so if you are using electron box diagram okay if you are using electron box diagram all right i'm going to have what something like this all right Okay, so this one going up, this one coming down. All right, you now have this one again. All right, this one going up, this one is coming down. All right, then you now have what, uh, another box, okay, of higher energy. Okay, this one uh, having three degenerates. Okay, so I'm going to have one. 
Okay, we're going to have what one. All right. So because this is two p two uh one s two two s two then what two p. Okay, this is what p x p y and what p z. Okay, because the p orbital has what three degenerates. In fact, let me not talk more about much about that. But this is what the electron configuration using electron box what diagram. Okay, now this is what the ground state electron configuration of carbon. But the excited state in the started in the excited state of what. Uh, a excited state electronic configuration of carbon rather a carbon what absorbs what energy okay it absorbs energy to what and, and one of these electrons in the s orbital is promoted okay to what to the electron to the what to the to the p orbital one of the electrons in this s orbital is promoted to the what to the p orbital so that what we're not going to have in the excited state 1s2 2s2 uh, sorry 2s1 now because one has been promoted to 2p, so I'm gonna have 2p or 3. Alright? So this is this is the excited state. Excited what state electronic configuration of what of carbon. Please take note of that. So for if you want to use the electron box uh, dot and uh, uh, electron box diagram to represent this, of course, I think you want to have what's your your this, your one, your one here, then your two. Okay, then I'm going to have this next. All right, here yeah, now we are going to have one electron in this box because one has been promoted to the what to the next day. You now have what this okay, your p uh, orbital okay. They are going to have what this, this, this. All right, so uh, this is the excited state electronic configuration of what of uh, of carbon. All right, why another thing to know is that what this excited state is very, very unstable, it's very. Unstable, so uh, definitely it what it will collapse back to what to this one. It will collapse back to this electron that was what promoted. We collapse back to what to this uh, s orbital, and then of course uh, you see that what a large amount of what electron magnetic radiations will be released. Okay, that is just by the way. Anyway, okay, but what you should know here is what the ground state electronic configuration of carbon and the excited state electronic configuration of carbon. And for any reason, if you do not understand what electronic configuration is about, go and watch our videos on electronic configuration. So carbon, back to carbon. Carbon has what? Uh, six protons, six neutrons, and what? And six electrons. We have seen the electronic configuration of what? Of carbon, okay? 1s2, 2s2, and what? 2p2, okay? Because it has what? Six what? Electrons, okay? As you can see, evidently, from here, it has six electrons. So there are many organic compounds. Okay, they have they have several many what organic compounds, and the reason why we have several many organic compounds are not far fetched. Okay, let us see some of the reason why we have many many organic compounds. Okay, number one is the tetravalency of carbon. Okay, the tetravalency of carbon. Carbon has four electrons in its atom shell. Okay, number one, the tetravalency of carbon. Okay, these are the reasons, we're looking at the reasons why we have so many organic compounds. The tetravalency of carbon, carbon has, what, four electrons, electrons in its outermost shell. Outermost for shell. Okay, you, of course, the reason is not far-fetched because what it belongs to what? To group four, okay, of the what? Or the periodic cable, uh, periodic table, not cable, sorry. Okay, so it belongs to what? To group four of the periodic what, table. All right, so carbon is what? Tetravalent, has four electrons in this what? In this what? Outermost shell. Okay, and this is one of the reasons why we have uh, so many organic compounds. All right, also number two, the ability of carbon atoms, the ability of carbon atoms to catenate, okay? To catenate, that is what, to form long chains. That is to form long chains, to form long chains, okay? All right, so the ability of carbon atom to catenate, okay, it's another what reason why we have so many what organic compounds. That's how you see what C, um, C3H8, okay, you see what C10, what H22, what, all right, and so on and so forth. All right, so you see what C, 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 very long chains, all right, very long chains, very long chains. The ability of carbon atom to form to catenate, that is the ability to form long chains, okay, it's another reason why we have what, 
so many what organic what compounds. All right. Then, uh, likewise, the ability of uh, the affinity of for carbon to what to other elements. Another reason is the affinity. Carbon has what affinity for other what elements. The affinity, affinity has love affinity of carbon. Okay, to what other what elements. It's another reason why we have so many what organic what compounds. Okay, so these are the reasons why we have so many organic compounds. The tetravalency of carbon. Carbon has four electrons in this atom of shell. The ability of carbon atoms to catenate, that is to form long chains. And of course, the affinity of carbon to what? To other what elements. These are the reason why we have so many what organic compounds. Now, in this uh lastly, in this what episode, I'm going to look at the properties of organic compounds. Okay, properties of organic what compounds. Organic compounds are covalent in nature. They are covalent what in nature. They are formed, okay, by what sharing what a pair of what of electrons, okay, shared pair, okay, by what shared pair of what of electrons. All right, so that is why they are what they are covalent. They are covalent, okay. So properties of organic compounds, properties, properties of organic compounds. Number one, they are covalent. No this and no peace. They are covalent in nature. They are covalent in nature. Okay, like I say, what well, are formed? Okay, by what? By sharing what? Electrons. Sharing a pair of what? Of electrons between what? The two atoms. Okay, sharing a pair of electrons between what? The atoms. All right. So if you have not watched our videos on what? Bonding. Go and also watch it. Okay, we'll talk about ionic bonding, covalent bonding, the uh, metallic bonding, and the likes. So, like, so please go and what watch our, all our episodes on what on what bonding to cement your knowledge also. Okay, so uh this are the properties. This is one of the properties of organic compound, they are covalent in nature. Also, they have low melting and boiling points. They have what low melting, they have property number two, they have low melting and Boiling points, boiling what points compared compared to compared to what ionic compounds of equal molecular weight or mass. Okay, all right, simple as ABC. So, uh, number two, they have low melting and boiling points. Low melting and boiling points. Okay, you must know the properties. They are covalent in nature. They have low melting and boiling points compared to what? A ionic compound of equal molecular what mass. So, if you carry what? An ionic compound and a covalent what compound. Okay, and uh, an and, and organic compounds together. They have what? Uh, maybe similar or very close what molecular mass. All right, you see that what they. The uh, organic compound will have what low melting and boiling point compared to what to, to that what compound. Okay, so this is another property of what of what of uh, organic what compounds. They have what low melting and boiling point compared to a ionic compound of equal molecular what uh, weight or mass. Okay, also they are what they are flammable. Number three, they are flammable. Okay, that is inflammable too. Inflammable. They are flammable or what? Inflammable. You know what flammable, different between inflammable and inflammable is, right? Okay. Uh, should I tell you or should I tell you to comment it in the comment section so that you go and learn, learn it? Okay. But let me just say it. Okay. Flammable means what? That you have to what? Set them on fire. For example, wood. If you have what wood now, okay. Something, when you say something is flammable, I'm not saying wood is an organic compound, okay? So now, when we say something is flammable, all right, it means that what? You can set it on fire. All right, example is this one, like wood now. You carry matches, you carry grass, dried grass, and then you light matches, see, it catches fire, okay? So now, inflammable means that only it can what can ignite itself, okay? It can cause what burn it. Only, only it can just catch fire without what any inducement, okay? So, and the reason why they are flammable is because of, is because of their ease, of reaction with what with oxygen. Okay, they can easily what react with what with oxygen. So that is why what they are what highly of flammable. So they are flammable or inflammable and what and used as fears as fears. Okay, they are what used and therefore they are what they are used as what as fears. Okay, because they are what they are what they are flammable. They are what used as fuels. Okay, also as covalent compounds, they exist as gas number four as covalent. Compounds, comma, 
they exist as gases, volatile liquids, volatile liquids, low melting solids. Okay, so as covalent compounds, they exist. They exist as gases. They exist as gases. They exist as volatile liquids. And what low melting what solids, uh, low melting what solids. Okay, these are properties of what of covalent what compounds. Okay, they are organic compounds are covalent in nature already. Okay, so because they are covalent in nature, they exist as gases, volatile liquids, and what low melting what solids. Okay, this is another property of what of what of organic compounds. And generally, they are what they are insoluble in water. Okay, they are insoluble in water. Generally, generally, they are insoluble in water okay the ones that are soluble in water are the what they are the polar ones the polar organic what uh, compounds that are what are what that are that are soluble in water except except for what the polar organic organic compounds which are soluble all right, so please you must take note of what of these what properties. All right, so generally they are insoluble in water, okay, except for what for the polar what organic what compounds which are what soluble, okay. So uh, they are generally insoluble in water, but polar organic compounds are soluble what in water. All right, so it's as simple as ABC properties of organic compounds that are covalent in nature have low metal and boiling point, okay, compared to any compounds of equal molecular weight or mass, then they are flammable. Inflammable and used as what as fuels. Then, as covalent compounds, they exist as gases, volatile liquids, and what low melting solids. Generally, they are what insoluble in water, except for what polar organic compounds, which are what soluble. All right. So, to end this class, we are going to what look at um, a question from the app that we we're looking at before. Uh, chemistry 2011 number 40. It says the ability of carbon to form long chains is referred to as a acylation, b isolation, c catenation, d Carbonation. Okay, of course, the ability of carbon to form long chains is not here. We are cleaning it up. Okay, it's called what catenation. Please know that and know peace. In the next episode, we'll continue looking what into what uh, organic chemistry. Thank you for watching. I will see you there.